Laughter, tears, headache, and fulfillment. These are just a couple of words that describe my experience in teaching AVID. As a relatively new teacher at a brand new school, I accepted the offer to teach this elective class. It was either that or I had to teach another year of seventh grade English. Kind of. I, I don't even speak English. I speak <laughs> pidgin, if you like. So honestly, I, I knew very little about the program. Uh, and I knew that uh, I tried to take core, what I thought were Cornell notes in my very first staff meeting. I knew that I was going to have returning eighth graders who probably knew more about the program than I did. So with each week's at a glance lesson plan reviewed, taught, and reflected upon, I began to capture the vision and the mission of AVID. AVID has provided me with a plethora of effective strategies to use to teach my students. It has also taught me to learn the importance of collaboration and see, most importantly, and see what students can become rather than what they are now. So my degree is from BYU Hawaii. I earned a degree in exercise and sports science, which basically means I could teach PE kindergarten through 12th grade. So like Cordell Notes and Cornell Way and philosophical chairs and Socratic seminars and tutorials, these are all foreign things to me. I, I, I didn't really know what they were. Um, I took over the AVID class, like I mentioned, and I knew I was going to have returning eighth grade students. But not to be outdone or outwitted by know-it-all teenagers, right? I attended my very first summer institute with um, our AVID site team in Dallas, Texas. Wow, my eyes were opened. Okay? I attended the implementation strand and thought to myself, how could I ever be as good as a facilitator as Miss Martinez. I also thought to myself, dang, I wish I had AVID when I was a senior in high school. I returned to Hawaii with a fresh sense of optimism. I was a go-getter. I was going to do it. The day before school, I had everything set. I sat in my classroom, and I looked around. Then I thought to myself, what the heck am I going to do tomorrow? Um, I was nervous, to be honest, and I started to sweat, and then, you know, I reverted back to my awesome training in Dallas, Texas at my first, my first summer institute, then I calmed down. I'm not saying that I'm perfect, to be honest with you, I'm far from it, but I did teach Cornell Way. I did teach the 10-step process in tutorials. I taught philosophical chairs. Uh, my first philosophical chairs, I was so nervous, I forgot to set up the chairs. Yeah, but you know we debrief and then we fix things and we're okay. Second time around, the tutors are like, "You're probably gonna want chairs." <laughs> Thank you, tutors. You're so smart. <laughs> I taught Socratic seminar to the best of my ability, and you know, the, every time I taught a new strategy, the, every time I taught it, or tried, or made an attempt to try it, I became more confident. You know, you learn here a little, and you learn there a little, and you fix things, and you become more confident. So the best way, my, 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 if I could give you any um, words of advice for you avid elective teachers there or anybody here, everybody here, what you learn here at the Summer Institute, the best way to implement an avid strategy is to just do it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> just do it. Yeah? So what if you don't remember all the, the letters represent in Cornell Way and all these acronyms? So what if you fail at your first attempt or second or third, five, six, seven, eight, all that? Is that just me? Sorry. It's okay. Uh, learning is in the doing. You do your best. I did my best. For all you, um, like I said, mentioned, all you core teachers out there, just do it. You know, you could film your first philosophical chairs of Socratic seminar at 205, play it back and laugh at it, okay? Critique it, and that's okay. Now, I can remember also one of the uh, philosophical chairs I had one time in the library. I had a student of mine who felt so comfortable with sharing out her opinion and the stand that she took. 
that she began to cry. Now, if you know anything about teenage girls, once the faucet is on, it's waterfall, <laughs> right? So, being the macho teacher that I am, not, I turned real quick and my eyes were, bling, 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 bling. you know, to try to, I didn't want to get caught. So I quickly turned around. So I encourage you, try a philosophical chairs. Try a Socratic seminar. Try these different avid strategies and implement them in your class. If it doesn't work, that's okay. When the kids leave, you can refine your ninja-like skills to become better. In fact, I have some teachers that come back to me from last year's summer institute here in Hawaii, and they are so excited to tell me about their very first philosophical chairs, their very first Socratic seminar. And I, I love hearing stories of how these teachers are trying new things, and hey, that's the best part about learning. Learning is in the doing. So we do, yes? I got so passionate, I lost my mark. Oh, here we go. So AVID strategies are amazing and they take time to implement effectively. Working with AVID teachers, your coordinator, the site team will greatly benefit your preparation. I can promise you that. I can't promise you that you're gonna have a more awesome team than I have, but work together, collaborate. Collaboration is teamwork. That's the response I get when I ask students, what does collaboration mean? Collaboration is teamwork. It is teamwork. I've learned that to become an effective teacher and learner, you have to rely upon those that have been trained in the Jedi style. <laughs> Seriously, I've been blessed with an amazing uh, Avid Site team, supportive administration, and Ohana of fellow teachers that have helped me along my way. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not ashamed to be one of those teachers that beg, borrow, or steal lesson plans. Right, Campbell High School? <laughs> right, Avid Site team? No shame, no shame. There is no shame, that's something we say in Hawaii. No shame like on the first day when they said one sandwich, yeah? I seen some of you guys. <laughs> I was one of those guys. We're teachers, right? I'm not gonna take one sandwich. Anyway, no shame, try it out. Avid is time. <laughs> laugh, laugh, but everybody did it. Evan has taught me the importance of collaboration. I am not in this alone, and neither are you. And that's the best part about it. We are one ohana. As one of our site team members says, it's all about the kids. Right, Jenna? It's all about the kids. <laughs> Truly, it is all about the kids. Trying to help middle school students see themselves in college is no easy task. Trying to help middle school students remember their name tag every day is no easy task. <laughs> you know, I explain to them the importance of tutorials and Cornell notes and being organized and being responsible. But why do I feel that my poetic words have fallen upon deaf ears? I've learned the meaning of the old adage, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. I can remember teaching Costa's higher order of questioning and seeing students nod their heads, and I'm thinking to myself, nailed it. <laughs> but only to be disappointed when their responses were nowhere near my heartfelt speech. <laughs> I then remembered Mr. Jaime Escalante, if you remember the movie Stand and Deliver, and how he first captured their hearts, then he taught them. So I resolved that, Mr. Toilolo, you'll need to speak Spanish. <laughs> Just kidding. Actually, I knew that I would, I would have to show them how much I did care first before I could teach them anything. Just a quick side note, don't ever tell students in front of other students that you care about them. You'll get the most awkward look in all the land. <laughs> yeah? So. Sometimes students want to be recognized uh, in front of everybody else. They'd, they'd rather receive some kind of indirect acknowledgement. What kind of adult in here today agrees to that? That's nonsense. We hang our accomplishments on the wall, right? 
We like to be applauded for our efforts. We jump at the opportunity to speak at summer institutes. <laughs> right? Uh, I've learned that visualizing each student at graduation and on to college has help, helps me see what they can become rather than what they are right now. Avid has planted a seed of encouragement, motivation, and optimism within me that has transformed the way I view my students today. May we all see them for what they can become instead of getting so caught up on what they might fail to do today. May we support them along the way so they can fulfill their dreams of college attendance and success. Avid is an amazing program. It has changed the way I approach the art of teaching. I am truly blessed to stand before you. I am truly blessed to have started my career in teaching in AVID and learned effective strategies, created a network of supportive people who I love so much and I will never ever forget. I'm continually learning new ways to improve teaching and learning each day. I thank my kids because you know what? I learn a lot from my kids. I learned so much, you have no idea. Avid has a contagious spirit of determination and whether you're a teacher implementing a strategy for the first time or a student learning the inquiry process, it's within that that learning, and for all of us, we all advance through our determination to do this way to student success, our theme for the 2014 Summer Institute which implies that there is one seeking the way, one leading the way. Oftentimes we might even have to take them by the hand and show them this way to success. Thank you all for coming today. I am truly blessed to know you, to work with you, to be a part of this wonderful program. Lead them, guide them, show them the way to success. Mahalo.